Hi everyone, welcome back to Islam Unbox. Today I will be talking about how Allah trying so hard to please Muhammad, his favorite guy, and by doing so, he actually caused more damage, more problems to Quran. In this video, I'm gonna show you three verses only. First, I will take you to Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 106. We do not abrogate a verse or cause it to be forgotten, except that we bring forth better than it or similar to it. Do you not know that Allah is over all things competent? Well, this verse is very wrong, <laughs> doesn't matter how you say it. Why would Allah replace a verse with something similar and secondly if he replaced it with a better one why didn't he come up with the better one to begin with hmm. that's very strange and why would he cause the verse to be forgotten hmm. i don't know why see you can see three problems on one verse and then, of course, at the end, Allah claimed that He is over all things competent. Wow. I don't know about that. I don't know. Anyway, back to the subject. So, this Surah Al-Baqarah verse 106 is very straightforward. Allah will replace a verse with something similar or better. Yeah. Now, let us let us take a look at Surah Anisa verse 3. I know I have talked about this verse before under different subject, different problem. In that video I um, that I made a few months ago, maybe two, three months ago, I did not, I do not believe that this verse actually limiting a Muslim man to have up to four wives only. However, today, for the sake of Allah, I will pretend I agree with most Muslims and most Muslim scholars that this verse is limiting Muslim men to have up to four wives only. Let us read Surah Anissa verse 3, Sahih International. And if you fear that you will need, sorry, and if you fear that you will not deal justly with the orphan girls, then marry those that please you of women, two or three or four. But if you fear that you will not be just, then one or those your right hands possess. That is more suitable that you may not incline. So now we will take a look at the tafs here. On this Surah Nisa verse 3. In this tafsir, this tafsir by Ibn Kathir, and in this tafsir, Aisha is actually talking. She's talking to his, uh, sorry, she's talking to her nephew, Urwa bin Azubair. I will start from the reading from here. She said, Oh, my nephew. This is about the orphan girl who lives with her guardian and shares his property. Her wealth and beauty may tempt him to marry her without giving her an adequate dowry, which might have been given by another suitor. So, such guardians were forbidden to marry such orphan girls unless they treated them justly. So this is the explanation of Surah, Surah Nisa, verse 3. This is the key. You can marry two, three, or four if you treat them justly. Right? Very simple. Actually, we don't actually need tafsir to understand the, the interpretation or the meaning of the verse, but just like I said, for the sake of Allah, let's do it. 
But now there's another problem because after Allah giving men, Muslim men, right to marry up to four, and then all of a sudden in Surah An Nisa, verse 129, let us take a look. By Abdul Halim, you will never be able to treat your wives with equal fairness, however much you may desire to do so. But do not ignore one wife altogether, leaving her suspended. If you make amends and remain conscious of God, He is more forgiving and merciful. And as you can see, this actually, we don't need tafsir to understand this. Right away, Allah said, you will never be able to treat your wives with fairness or with equal fairness. How come? How come after he gave he gave a green light to marry up to four, and then all of a sudden he said, Nope, you will never be able to be to treat them with equal fairness. How come? So it means this Allah doesn't know anything. <laughs> doesn't know human being, you know. It's very strange. But again, for the sake of Allah, today let us go to Tafsir. Another Ibn Kathir. It's very simple as well here. You will never be able to do perfect justice between wives even if it is your ardent desire. Means, oh people, you will never be able to be perfectly just between wives in every respect, even when one divides the nights justly between wives. There will still be various degrees concerning love, desire, and sexual intimacy. I will stop there for now. As you can see, it's very simple. So now, the problem is, if we check from Surah Al-Baqarah verse 106, Allah abrogate a verse and replace it with better one. So let's say, verse 129 abrogates verse 3, because it's better for the man. It's after a while, they realize, oh shoot, I don't actually love her. What am I going to do now? Allah gave a green light to divorce that wife. Yep. So this is better for the man. Or, the problem is, as you all know, the chapters in Quran are not in order. Zaid ibn Thabit was no smarter than a donkey. He did not know anything about Quran. He did not know anything about Islam. But he was given the order to compile Quran. Now, this is what I believe. It is not only the chapters are not in order. It is also the verses are not in order. Do you see where I'm going with this? So, if the verses are not in order, so how do I know which verse came down first? Who can say for sure verse 129 is actually verse 129? Do you get it? Because as you all know, Surah Anisa. Right? In the book, it says chapter 4. But according to Revelation, it is supposed to be chapter 92. Zaid ibn Tabit was way off.
So now it means it's not only the chapters are disarray, in disarray. The verses as well, not in order. So it means, I don't know if chapter 1, uh, Anissa, verse 129, abrogates Anissa, verse 3. Maybe it's verse 3, abrogate verse 129. That's not a problem. And of course, the last problem I want to to tell you here, to remind you, before I forget. It says, as you can see, if I keep going with this uh, tafsir here, we're at the end. You know? So, <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, let me read, you, read it to you one more time, the whole thing. It means, I start from here, means, oh people, you will never be able to to be perfectly just between wives in every respect, even when one divides the nights justly between wives, there will still be various degrees concerning love, desire, and sexual intimacy. As Ibn Abbas, Ubaidah al Salami, Mujahid al Hasan al Basri, and Ad Dahab bin Muzamin, sorry, Muzahim, stated. Now, the next one here. This is also a problem. Imam Ahmad and the collectors of the Sunan recorded that Aisha said the messenger of Allah used to treat his wives equally. I will stop there. So Aisha claimed that Muhammad treat his, treated his wife equally. But Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, Al-Hasan, at the Haq, and Ubaidah. They say, you will never do perfect justice between wives. That's including Muhammad, right? Because Muslims claim Muhammad also a human. No more than messenger, just like us, human. So it means Muhammad was not treating his wife he was not treating his wife justly. I think some of you, or maybe most of you who listen to this, know that Surah Anissa verse 129 is actually talking about Muhammad and Sauda. Sauda bin Zama. Let us take a look. We go up here. A little bit. Here, take a look from here. This is still Ibn Kathir, still on the same verse. Let me read. For instance, the Prophet kept Sauda bin Zama as his wife after she offered to forfeit her day for Aisha by keeping her among his wives. His Ummah may follow this kind of settlement. So now, all, all, all of you can see that Muhammad could not treat his wife justly. Some may, may say, well, he was a nice guy, he still kept Sauda. <laughs> this, this, uh, Sauda had to forfeit her night, her turn, and gave it to Aisha. So it means Muhammad did not come to her at all. Thirteen wives. And never he never came to Sauda. So now forget the intimacy. Muhammad was not even there for Sauda just emotionally not even emotionally because he could have definitely he could have okay 
I don't love you anymore or whatever. Or I don't like you or something. You are too ugly, whatever. I'm not interested. But he could just be there for her. Just he could uh, he could visit her and just to talk. Right? And Muhammad didn't even do that. That is very strange. So with this a few verses on the screen tonight, as you can see, there are so many problems. Start from Surah Al-Baqarah verse 106. Let me let me repeat the, what the problems are. I don't know why Allah did not come with a better first right away. Or, another problem of course, I don't know why Allah would let the verse be forgotten. And, and I don't know why Allah replaced a verse with a similar one. Similar one. Why? Why similar one? What for? That's, that's showing already something is wrong. And Surah Nisa, verse 3. And Surah Nisa, verse 129. I don't know which one, Abu which one. How come after uh, allowing Muslims to marry four, up to four wives, and then of, if you can do justice, if you can treat them justly, and all of a sudden in verse 129, oh no, you cannot do that. You will never be able to treat them with just justice. I don't know why. All of a sudden, Allah changed his mind. And of course, the last problem is, as you can see, Surah Nisa verse 129 is showing that Muhammad himself could not could not treat his wife justly. And Muhammad is claimed to be the seal of prophet, to be the best of mankind, that Muslims should follow how he ate, how he ate, how he drank, how he wiped his bum bum, and this the best man. So as you can see, what kind of standard they have. Well, that's all from it for tonight. It's something to think about. Maybe you're a Muslim. And listening to this, something to think about. Or maybe you're a Christian. If you're listening to this, you should, this should remind you why you should not be a Muslim. That's all from me for tonight. Thank you for listening and watching. Whether you're a Muslim or Christian, God bless you all. Have a nice life.